so guys in the meantime let me take a moment to introduce uh, sandeep uh, sandeep uh, is a full time uh, stock market trader he uh, i mean if you talk about the year since 2016 uh, although he had uh, entered the market in the year 2013 14 but you can say uh, from 2016 onwards things have uh, started to be like on more serious note and uh, as we all know he is a very uh, strong proponent of uh, the accumulation and distribution method so which we will be discussing during the course of this session and by profession he is a mechanical engineer and good to see so many engineers coming to investing fraternity and guys i i see two three requests at this point in time so i won't be able to take these requests initially i have a set of questions initially say 10 15 minutes and then i'll approve and in case i approve i request you all to keep on mute so as not to disturb the voice quality so welcome sandeep any opening note from your side and what our attendees can expect from today's session sure thank you uh, prince so in in today's session we'll be covering how exactly the accumulation and distribution thing works like as a retail investor how can we know whether we are in the accumulation phase or we are in the distribution phase or what exactly is happening in the market right and after that we can also discuss about uh, which sectors are kind of looking good as of now as per the data right and also any other uh, not directly stock specific but maybe sector specific if i am seeing accumulation you guys can ask me and i shall be able to uh, reply to those queries as well uh, prince great great so sandeep we also have uh, shashank and vajpayee ji with us they also have a good sense of technical so i i expect a good set of questions from them also but again uh, sure. let me throw a question like how it all started for you and how had been your journey so far okay so uh, like any other retail investor right once you start earning you have uh, colleagues around you who are kind of investing and they tell you isme paisa dalo paisa banega and all of that so the same way it start, started for me as well in 2013 14 wherein i just bought some stocks few went up few went down and then uh, after a certain point since i am from a middle class family right like most of the middle class families you have that mentality ki market satta bazaar hai and you only end up losing money there right so that was the thing until 2015 where i met a colleague who kind of showed me the money control app and then he pointed at okay this is the eps this is the pe and this is what you have to look for before investing and then it started to make sense that okay this is not completely a satta bazaar and if you kind of study and invest you will make money because that guy showed me his portfolio he was making money right so that kind of gave me a confidence and i started reading books and uh, to be honest i never want to be a full time uh, stock market investor it just happened that way in 2016 as you guys know we were in the midst of a, a crazy bull run that happened for two years right 2016 and 17 so at that point whatever stock you buy you kind of made uh, 20 30 50 even 100% in a matter of few months so during that time i made crazy money so my first stock uh, prince it was uh, kakatiya cement and sugar and that in a period of one and a half month that kind of doubled and since i was knowing very little about the markets what happened was i put all my money in just one stock right and that kind of doubled so i took out my uh, capital from there then i bet on upper ganges and there was another stock uh, called dwarkesh that dwarkesh is still there upper ganges they have broken it down into our then magad sugar so that kind of went up 60% in 3 days that is the upper ganges one right so there i started to feel that i know everything about the markets and markets are very easy right so it was that kind of a market where i made to be honest some 300 400% on my uh, whole capital so that kind of gave me a sense of this thing that okay i don't have to go back to working life again and i can just continue doing this but then the 2018 crash happened and any of you who are a mid or a small cap investor you know how painful those two years were especially the 9, 18 and 19 and that is when i kind of uh, 
took it seriously okay now i have to learn technicals as well before that i was just a fundamental investor looking at uh, the eps growth the uh, company's balance sheet the company's financial ratios and trying to figure out okay this company is going to be here in the next one or two years and i should be investing now because it is cheap but the whole thing changed when i read uh, this book uh, called as how to uh, trade in stocks by jesse livermore although he doesn't talk much about uh, technicals right he kind of uh, tells you how the mindset should be of a trader right and that kind of changed my perspective again uh, against this uh, trading thing and then i started to learn candlesticks i started to look, look at the volumes i started to look at the charts right and then kind of uh, doing um, back testing that is when i was able to kind of figure out okay this is how the accumulation and distribution takes place especially in the small and mid caps and if a retail investor kind of figures that out it would be very easy for him to just ride along with those big guys and make money so the actually i, I was never into teaching print so uh what happened was once covid hit a few of my uh, friends like very close friends they were sitting at home and they said okay uh, teach us also how you are doing this right and that is how it started i made a course for them i taught them and then there there's one student who was kind of following me from the money control days wherein i was talking about something like v2 retail which went up from 60 to 500 in a matter of a year or year and a half right so that guy said i see you tweeting about uh, accumulation and all can you teach me this uh, thing as well so i said uh, let me think about it and that guy said okay uh, send me my your bank details because i don't stay in india i need to first uh, uh, i mean feed it in my uh, account and then whenever you start i'll send it and that guy what he did princess he sent me uh, amount he just asked me what would be approximately the course fees and then he just sent it to me and he was like whenever you start make sure i am the your first student and that is how the whole uh, teaching thing started so my very first batch was just hardly four students who wanted to learn this and that is how i'm almost 800 odd students i have as of today so that has been my journey so far in the market sprint that's really great sandeep and wish uh, that 800 count may go to 8000 or 80000 and many more zeros on the right and the side so so sandeep uh, that's really yeah. great to hear from you and uh, right so so the technical thing you started in the year 2019 seriously right and you you primarily focus on the right. accumulation and distribution thing but like before that uh, right so yeah yes sir. Uh, so uh, that is when i started looking at charts because until then i didn't know what are these green and uh, red bars right so once uh, you go through the book right he tell, talks about the price action and all of that so that is when and then i thought which is the best indicator for price movement right and the uh, thing popped out that these japanese candlesticks are the best one so i kind of studied the japanese uh, candlesticks and then uh, came the volumes although many people don't use the volumes so uh, so much but volumes is one very main indicator for me and that is how it started it was not like all of a sudden i was able to pick it up prince it was more of a trial and error trial and error and finally i was able to uh, crack how exactly this plays out that's superb so sandeep like uh, what is your process as in like how you start uh, where the screener thing and basically how you generate the ideas or how how the approach like you identify the sector first and then go for companies or how how exactly you go about it okay so f- first uh, i'll talk a little about accumulation like how uh, what exactly accumulation is for uh, uh, people to know that what is accumulation in detail right so we'll start with that prince if that's fine yeah yeah great great yeah go yeah ahead. so so accumulation is basically whenever these uh, big guys or smart money so who exactly are these big guys or smart money so these are your mutual fund guys your pms guys your uh, pension funds institutions all these uh, institutions when i say like uh, insurance companies they also directly buy stocks so them or else even other uh, companies if they want to invest right so 
all that comes under smart money so what they do they have a set of people who kind of do their research and then they say okay this is a great stock to buy so once they buy right whatever they are buying we call it as accumulation right so how can a retail investor get to know this princess whenever big guys buy right there is a surge in volume right because uh, big guys don't go out there and let's say if they want to buy 10 lakh shares prince they will not go out there and buy 5 5000 every day for the, let's say 2 3 months right usually it is a, a, a few days of transaction so that is when what happens usually is the volume surge and usually the price will also start to inch up a little so that is how we kind of figure out that okay this is accumulation that is happening in this particular stock and uh, if we are able to figure that out we what we can do is we can just tag along with them and then make money so what i have done is i have taken a list of stocks right and segregated them based on their sectors right so and i have set this filter like uh, so and so a volume if the volume is greater than this particular level then you you know that there is some activity happening in that particular stock so when i see a lot of stocks from a particular sector prince having pretty good volume then you would come to know okay big guys are now interested in that particular stock so this is how i have done it uh, different almost some 40 or 50 odd sectors different sectors and their stocks in that and if those volumes pop up right from the past volumes which uh, were let's say the past volumes were 10000 10000 10000 or somewhere like 10 to 20000 now all of a sudden you start seeing 50000 1 lakh volumes you would come to know prince that okay these big guys are interested in that stock and you can concentrate on those and that particular stock and once you f- figure out that okay this is the sector what i basically do is then go into detail like okay which stock is doing capex which stock is fundamentally good having very good roc number right so uh, based on that i would finally f- finalize okay uh, these are the stocks and along with that the technical should also be good uh, prints right like uh, they should be inching upwards the rsi should be greater than 50 you should have a bullish candlestick and all of that so based on that i would finally figure out okay these are the stocks i would play from this sector based on the accumulation that i have seen and also the bullish technicals Yeah, uh, Sandeep, I just have a quick yeah. question. And firstly, you know, I mean, thanks sure. for sharing all your knowledge and you know whatever you're doing on Twitter is quite uh, you know worth uh, worth of appreciation. Um, so so thanks, my Sashan. so my question yeah. is that you know this whole you know you know the biggest confusion in this accumulation mm-hmm. and uh, this strategy is that when how to figure mm-hmm. out when it is an accumulation and when it's a distribution. so right. so you know generally you know because what happens is you know typically if you look at this you know the stage 3 so stage 3 mm-hmm. some people would say it is an accumulation some people you know argue it's a you know distribution so what are the you know right. the real you know real way to figure this out and my second question would be that um in this whole idea of accumulation distribution i know you know uh, wykoff has done uh, richard wykoff has done some work on it and where right. where do you think the indian market differs from you know the generic accumulation and distribution rules right yeah so Uh, coming to the first point so l- like you mentioned the stage wise analysis is very important chashank to figure out whether in what phase we are in like wykoff uh, talks about reaccumulation phase like once the base is made right so for viewers you can just uh, read uh, uh, profiting in bull and bear market right from by stan weinstein or you can read the wykoff theory right to understand uh, the stage wise analysis so usually what happens at the bottom right shank if you look at the uh, so we'll take into account the stage wise analysis by stan weinstein and then try to apply our method so at the bottom right when it is kind of moving up and down on the 30 wma right if you start seeing pretty high volume bars that is when you would come to know shashank that okay now we are in accumulation phase and then the stock finally moves above the Uh, 30 wma uh, with a huge volume thing 
right it might if you draw a trend line kind of a thing it would be a breakout on that as well so combining both of that you will know that okay now it is clearly in stage 2 right and then like you said the confusion is at the stage 3 point because few people can't really make out okay whether it is kind of moving down or moving up basically what i have seen is a stock will spend maximum of 2 months right if it is in reaccumulation phase sashank right it won't spend more like 6 months going sideways right so if a, something is going uh, sideways for let's say more than th- 2 3 4 months right you definitely know that okay now it is actually in stage 3 and it is not really retesting the 30 wma line right so so you basically take the duration part right that, right so because, the duration yeah. part, uh, along with that shank you look at the global economy as well mm-hmm. like how well is doing and also a very important one which not many people talk about is the interest rates mm. right so if the interest rates start moving up that is going to pull down the stock market eventually all right, right. so initial interest rate hikes will not uh, have so much of an impact on the market but the latter ones right let's let's say uh, now we have come from 4 to 6.25 right maybe after 5 or 5.5 it is going to start having an impact on the economy on the demand which would eventually make all those guys who had come into the stock market move away from the market and again happily invest in fds right so if your inflation is less than 6% and you are getting some 7 and a half 8% on your fds you'll happily go back to keeping your money safe in the fds because anyways you would have made some 30 50 or 100 odd percent in the last two years from the market right so interest rate along with the duration you would able to kind of figure it out uh, shashank like not only the uh, rates in india but even globally mm, okay. you know, as the, there is no hike in interest rates you can happily stay invested in that stock and uh, be very sure that this is still in stage 2 and still it is going to move up right so because you know what i personally you know also blend one thing is that i i add the dow theory to it like for example if right. there is yeah. a you know like you know sign of accumulation like mm-hmm. generally the dow theory would be respected of making you know higher lows Correct. generally so that's uh, and in yeah. a distribution phase the one thing is common is that you know you would have the you know the you know lower, lower highs, highs. Yeah. lower highs and lower yeah. lower yeah that's right so yeah Co- i just bl- bl- yeah. That part and, all. and and yeah coming to the second yeah. part so yeah, go ahead. i use that uh, shashank yeah. right so even i use that like uh, whenever it is making a higher high and a uh, higher low right you continue to write uh, uh, i mean write the whole wave you don't want to cut it short right? right and it works much better if you use a kind of a weekly chart to do that many people do it on a daily and get they get stopped out so if you use a weekly chart and use the dow thing right mm. uh, it would work excellently well right perfect yeah and then the second question how is the indian market different different things. so in the, in the market what exactly happens i'll tell you uh, these uh, in foreign markets uh, the retail investors can uh, actually make the big guys also bleed sometimes like what we saw in gamestop and all right the big guys were heavily short on the particular stock and these guys just kept on pumping it higher and eventually the big guys made loss right in indian markets uh, why is it different is you can't short a stock correct in indian this thing the, it is not allowed to carry a short position in equity although you can do it in futures but in futures you only have the large cap stocks right so that is one reason wh- wherein it differs uh, you you won't be able to exactly figure out and also in india the operators are kind of very strong sometimes they will give you a shake out so what i generally do like let's say if there is a big volume thing kind of happening at let's say 100 bucks right and it go- goes up to 110 and there you don't see any volume but all of a sudden the stock drops below uh, let's say 100 uh, many people will panic and they kind of sell it off right but i would know that okay if a big guy with such a volume has bought uh, stocks at this particular level he is not going to sell it at a lower price especially the big guys right you, you if you see 99% of the big guys always end up making money it's always the retail who kind of lose money in the markets 
right so with that thing you would be i mean it is a little different since the big guys especially the fii's if you look at them they would largely play in the large and mid, uh, larger mid cap stocks in small caps very few fii's play so in india the smaller and let's say most of the mid caps are only run by domestic money and a lot of operator activity right so that is how it differs like not many institutional or, or the foreigners are playing in the uh, smaller uh, this thing so if you uh, uh, so it becomes very easy for the operator to kind of manipulate sometimes they can make a stop drop just so that your stop loss would be taken out and you end up selling it and they again buy at lower levels and start pushing it higher shashank so this manipulation happens in most of the uh, micro caps small caps and even the mid caps in india right that answers thanks thanks a lot sandeep yes sir thanks shashank will come to you again so in between sandeep we take question from amit and sj so amit you can unmute and go first Amit, you can unmute and ask your question. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Sandeep. Hi, Amit. So, how can we identify the uh, upcoming sectors? There can we up more. yeah so amit usually what happens first we'll try to understand the types of smart money right so not every smart money that comes in and buys a particular stock right they would want to make gains in the next one or two weeks right sometimes what happens you would see high volumes and then still the stock keeps moving sideways so usually what happens there are two kinds of smart money first is ones who are looking for uh, quick short term gains and others who are okay staying with the stock for medium to long term right so those guys don't have the urge to start pushing the stock immediately right when i say medium to long term guys so you have pension funds who invest in india for the uh let's say next 5 or 10 years and you have long only funds you have many of these mutual funds right which want to keep money in a particular stock for a uh, let's say few years kind of time frame because now that there is a difference between short term gains and long term gains they want to book long term gains in that which is lesser than the short term by 5% right so sometimes it tests patience if it is a long term guy who is uh, getting into a stock usually in such a stock what you will see is even though the volumes are high the stock does not really start moving up it might be range bound for some time but it does not start moving up immediately whereas if it is a let's say uh, these uh, overnight funds liquid funds or even many of these pms guys so in pms what happens the more money you make for your client the more money uh, you will also make right so that is why what they'll do is such guys whenever they start buying a particular stock you'll see the stock usually start responding that is inching up in a week or maximum 2 3 weeks right so uh, f- usually what i do is if the stock is kind of having a uh, continuous high volume thing for a, a pretty uh, long time and without a movement i would know that okay this is more like a medium term kind of a player getting into a stock or even long term guys so in such a case you would want to rely more on fundamentals amit right if it is something like okay you started seeing high volumes and the stock also starts jumping up right like in most of your uh, psu banking stocks what you saw the stock breaking out and then high volumes continuously moving up so it might be the short term players who are just trying to make quick make quick money and get out of those stocks right and how do i get to know which sector is going to do well is based on which sector how many stocks from which sector are having those uh, volume shockers or volumes are going up in those particular sectors i mean and you, you want to know which ones will do not good from now or was it more of a general question from now also okay so from now what i'm seeing is chemicals as a sector is having pretty high volumes most of those stocks so i feel because of the whole china covid thing that is happening I feel the 
chemical prices have again started inching up maybe because of that usually what happens amit it is very uh, difficult to connect the dots looking forward because now i would be seeing a accumulation happening in those particular stocks but as of now there won't be any news but let's say two weeks three weeks from now all of a sudden the news comes in and you would say okay this is what the big guys already knew and because of that they were buying much before the retail is buying so usually 90% of the times what i've seen is the big guys buy in first right and once you start uh, seeing the news hitting the market usually they start getting out because they would have already made that 15 20 25% tamit right like many times we kind of buy stocks on results right very strong set of results the company posts and we go out there and buy a stock 10 days from that you would say that why is the stock going down it gave such strong results but the stock price is coming down what is wrong with the company right so what would have happened is uh, the big guys or the insiders or uh, these operators they would have already known that okay this is the result the stock is going to post or the product that the company is selling the price has already started moving up so they start taking a position much before the news is out in the market and once the news is out it, it is usually these guys kind of dumping it back to the retail so that is why you uh, tell most of my um, most of the people right never buy something on news so once you buy something on news usually in a day or two these guys would end up uh, selling their stuff and uh, getting out of that stock so either have a system to know that okay there is high volumes happening in this sector and this should do well in the coming days and take a position with them or else after uh, some news is out there there is no point uh, buying something because everyone knows that uh, story so if everyone knows that story and everyone is buying then who is selling it and pushing the stock price down right so even if everyone is buying and the stock price is going down you would know that okay the retail is buying the big guys are just getting out of that stock so sj now you can unmute and ask your question sj you can unmute and ask your question अच्छा एक दो मिनट में प्रिंस जी जरा सा मैं थोड़ा सा संदीप जी से कुछ जानना चाहूंगा तो संदीप जी जैसे अभी आपने काफी अच्छा डिटेल में बताया वॉल्यूम के संबंध में तो मैं रिसेंट एग्जांपल जैसे अभी जो हुआ है पिछले वीक में इसके संबंध में थोड़ा सा मैं आपसे चाहूंगा कि जरा सा बताएंगे तो शायद और लिस्टर को समझ में आएगा अच्छे से मगर शुगर या शुगर सेक्टर था मतलब लास्ट वीक में मंडे से पहले मैंने फ्राइडे के दिन शुगर सेक्टर में एक वॉल्यूम थोड़ा सा बेहतर जनरेट हुआ दिन मंडे को बहुत ही हाईएस्ट वॉल्यूम है और हाईएस्ट वॉल्यूम पर हाई प्राइस बना तो इसको आप किस रूप में देखेंगे कि मतलब यहाँ पर इंसाइडर ने प्रॉफिट बुक कर लिया या हाँ जी तो वो, वो कैसा पता चलेगा मतलब आप डेली इस पे कैंडल देखोगे ना अगर हाई वॉल्यूम पे बेरिश कैंडल बन रहा है सर तो मतलब आपको पता है कि यहाँ पे मतलब उल्टा सेलिंग आ रहा है राइट नहीं नहीं बेरिश नहीं बनी ना संदीप जी देखिए 19 तारीख हाँ? को आपका जो जैसे मगर सुगर की अभी आपने बात करी थी तो मगर सुगर में हाँ? तीन सौ अट्ठावन अस्सी का हाई बनाया और तीन सौ पचास या चालीस के आसपास बंद हुआ मतलब अच्छा खासा ग्रीन कैंडल ही बनी थी ये बात सर विद थी उसमें ऊपर में बट फुल बॉडी कैंडल अच्छी खासी मतलब पिछली कैंडल से काफी ऊपर बनी थी बट नेक्स्ट डे से वो फाल होना शुरू हो गया और सीधा 284 पे जाके रुका तो मेरा खाली इतना कहना था कि जो जैसे अन्ना कॉलिंग ने अपनी बुक में जिस प्रकार से कुमेलेशन और डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन को इन के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से जो डिस्क्राइब किया है तो उससे आप कुछ सहमत है कि पहले कुमेलेशन हो गया और उनको इस बात का आयदा था कि कोई खबर आने वाली है बराबर खबर आने वाली हुई उसके पहले वो थोड़ा सा वॉल्यूम बढ़ाया और खबर जिस दिन डिस्पोज हुई उस दिन उन्होंने हैवी वॉल्यूम के साथ में बढ़ा के उसको सेल कर दिया करेक्ट सो अब तो वो हमको पत, पता कैसे चलेगा सर कि मतलब उसके अगले दिन आप देखेंगे मैं भी मगर शुगर का चार्ट लेके बैठा हूँ तो अगले दिन वो ये बनाए उसको हम बेरिश हरामी पैटर्न बोलते हैं जहाँ पे बड़े कैंडल के अंदर में ही छोटा कैंडल बनाए राइट सो वो जो प्राइस रिजेक्शन हुआ है ना वहां पे 
उससे हमको पता चलेगा सर कि पिछले दिन जो इन्होंने उठाया था शायद वो सभी सेलिंग वॉल्यूम था और उसके बाद प्राइस रिजेक्शन होना स्टार्ट किया तो उसी दिन हम अपना प्रॉफिट बुक करके बाहर आ जाएंगे उससे और उसके बाद स्टॉक दो सौ तक चला गया राइट सो हम थ्री के आसपास ही उसको बुक कर लेते हाँ तो मतलब कहने का तात्पर्य हुआ ये जो वॉल्यूम जनरेट हुआ और उसके अगले दिन जो हमें कैंडल बनी रेड कैंडल मिली तो वो हमको एक इंडिकेट करती है कि ये वॉल्यूम बाइंग का ना होकर सेलिंग करा होगा है ना सर राइट राइट तो इसको इसको इस तरह से भी कोरिलेट कर सकते हैं जैसे अन्ना कॉलिंग ने लिखा कि जब भी कोई न्यूज आती है तो उसको इन बहुत ही अच्छी तरीके से मैनिपुलेट करके और उसको इतना प्रचारित करते हैं कि हर आदमी उसमें बाय करने के लिए हो जाए और सिर्फ सिर्फ इनसाइडर नहीं सर पूरा आप इसको हर कोई टीवी चैनल लगाएंगे ना तो हर कोई टीवी चैनल भी वही दिखाएगा आपको कि शुगर सेक्टर तेजी में है बाय कर लो ये अच्छा न्यूज आया है राइट वो तो उन्होंने कहा तो अन्ना कॉलेज ने कहा की पूरा मीडिया प्रिंट मीडिया और टीवी सारे उसमें मतलब इन्वॉल्व हो जाते हैं इंक्लूड हो जाते हैं न्यूज आई तो न्यूज तो प्रचारित होगी स्वभाव सी बात है अब उस न्यूज को किस रूप में लेना है और किस तो आपके मतलब ये जो आपने बताया इससे थोड़ा सा ये समझ में आना चाहिए सभी लोगों को जो बहुत हाई वॉल्यूम है उसको मतलब दो सस्पिशन से भी देखना चाहिए संदेह की निगाह से भी और फॉलो अप के बिना उसमें बाई नहीं करनी चाहिए क्या आपका इसमें ओपिनियन है करेक्ट सर मतलब इसमें वो आप देखोगे ना तो वो मान लीजिए वो ब्रेकआउट हो चुका है तो इधर आप ब्रेकआउट रीटेस्ट के लिए वेट कीजिए राइट नहीं तो उसमें खेलिए मत जब ऑलरेडी वो 20-30 परसेंट भाग चुका है आप क्यों आपका ये मतलब रिस्क लेके वहां पे बाय करना चाहिए आपको मतलब 10-15 परसेंट वो रीटेस्ट लेवल से ऊपर में राइट और जब वो रीटेस्ट लेवल पे वापस आएगा तो लेट इट नॉट क्लोज बिलो दैट रीटेस्ट लेवल जो आपको कंफर्म होगा कि इसमें अभी भी तेजी बनी हुई है और स्टॉक अभी भी ऊपर जाने वाली है आप वही स्टॉक को अगर देखे हुए तो नेक्स्ट डे क्या हुआ है वो रिटेस्ट लेवल पे उसको मतलब तोड़ के नीचे ही क्लोज हुआ है उससे राइट डेली चार्ट पे अगर आप देखोगे तो वहां से बिल्कुल पता चल जाएगा कि इसमें बाय करना इट इज नॉट रियली एडवाइजेबल थिंग राइट संदीप राइट तो संदीप लाइक यू टॉक अबाउट द स्क्रीनिंग क्राइटेरिया ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ वॉल्यूम सो सो योर क्वेरी ओनली कंटेन वॉल्यूम और यू आल्सो इंक्लूड समथिंग एल्स लाइक मूविंग एवरेजेस और काइंड ऑफ so so what uh, so, you would so like volume is the uh, volume is the main one prints so once i start seeing a uh, very good volumes right then i do the stage wise analysis of those uh, particular charts right whether it is in stage 1 or stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 right so for any retail investor it's a must read book like even if you uh, play the market in stage 2 up to stage 3 one can easily make something like uh even 100 or even 200 odd percent in a particular stock right in those 1 to 2 years of bull run right and once the trade stage 3 starts right retail investor who has a job right he can just take his profits and step out of the market and wait for the next stage 2 that is after the stage 4 drop right let it go into stage 1 and then start going into stage 2 so that is what i uh, tell most of the retail investors that since you are not full time into it there is no need for you to continuously trade the market right when you know the stock is in stage 4 no point in trying to play them for those 10 15 points uh, or 10 15 percentage jump you can just let the stock go play those stocks which are in stage 2 those have a better chance of moving up freely than something that is in stage 4 and is under heavy selling pressure right sandeep so basically uh, what we can uh, understand from this is like keeping in accumulation stage can be an opportunity cost am i right on this or uh, you read it up? okay so sandeep like if some something came to your radar on the basis of your query which you ran like volumes are mm-hmm. above a certain threshold right so mm-hmm. what is the next process and how you finally decide when you enter and also yeah so usually i make we use of these uh, weekly uh, candlesticks uh, prints right so if the weekly candle that i see is let's say a reversal candle or a bullish continuation candle and along with that 
RSI is uh, very important for me. So RSI, if it is above 50 or 60, right, you would know that, okay, there is momentum also building. Like I said, accumulation can be done by either the medium to long term guys or even the short term guys prints. So how do we differentiate between that is the technical start looking bullish, right, if it is done by a short term guy. So that is when you also jump along uh, with them and uh, make sure uh, you also ride it as long as they push. And usually, Prince, what happens? They don't bet 10 crores, 20 crores, 50 crores for a 5% rally, right? They, usually in small and mid caps, what I've seen is the rallies, like even if you see the sugar stocks, it was more of a 20% or even higher than that kind of a rally, right? Usually it is about 10, 15% kind of a rally that they play for and then they start booking out from there. So technicals are very important and on a weekly time frame, Prince, for me to take a short term position in a particular stock once the accumulation is done. Okay, so any other uh, multi-time frame you use or it's like only you see for weekly? Uh, so only weekly is uh, good enough for me. Along with that, the stage-wise analysis and also uh, if I'm investing I or even sometimes trading, I use the relative strength indicator prints. So what one can do is look at the market cap of that particular stock, right? So you need not compare a small cap stock with the Nifty, right? Because sometimes there can be a chance wherein the Nifty is going up, small cap index is going down. So you want to compare the small cap stock with the small cap uh, 100 index. So what you can do is uh, make these um, indicators on trading view, which anyone can do, just remove the comparison from nifty to the small cap 100 if it is a small cap stock and if it is a mid, mid cap stock you compare it with the mid cap index right so then you'll come to know that okay is this particular stock outperforming the mid cap or the small cap index so that would also give you kind of a conviction that okay this one is going against the tide right uh, so you would be able to make better profits in that particular stock Right, Sandeep. So, Sandeep, you only take uh, long trades or you also short at times when you see the structure is getting weak and... Uh... So I, I, I don't short them because most of my thing is in the small and mid caps, right? And they are not really in uh, the futures and options market. So I usually never short the market prints. It's only uh, either I get in uh, and the stock moves up, I make money, I get out of the stock, and then I, I'll just leave the stock aside and look for other opportunities. Never try to uh, short the nifty and all of that. Okay. So, Sandeep, would you also like to touch upon the divergence we often see when the, say, RSI is saying something and the price movement is in a different direction? So, Achha, yeah. to, so all my students here, they would know that this divergence thing, I've never really believed in Prince because I have tried applying it a few times, but it never gave me a satisfactory results. So, that is why I rely more on the volume than the divergence. But one thing I've seen, if you are seeing divergence, right, maybe Make sure the candlestick is also reversing there, right? Unless there is a reversing reversal on the candlestick side, right? let it be a daily chart or whatever time frame you use. Without a candlestick reversal, usually the uh, this thing will fail. For example, let's say there is a bullish divergence print. So what you would want to see is, okay, is the candlestick also showing me a reversal pattern? Right. So if it is so, then it is uh, one can go ahead and take a trade in that. Right. Right. Fair enough. So, so Sandeep, it's like the swing and positional trade you take. What's the normal duration you keep, or it all depends on the momentum and price action happening. So, how you go about it, and additionally, so you, like how you pyramid your position. Right. So usually what I've seen is uh, sometimes uh, depending on what kind of market we are in print. So this is a very important concept which not many people talk about. Like during a bull market, your position will start running from the very first day you start buy it. Right. But as we go into a more of a sideways market or a bear market, usually what happens, the duration might go, uh, I mean, into a few weeks or sometimes even months. 
so this is something that i have seen like in a bull market hardly in two weeks you kind of make 10 15 20% kind of returns once you see higher volumes and you get out of that stock in a sideways market it might extend to let's say one one odd month and then in a bear market sometimes it can be even a two month position that i take so i just buy that stock and i sit right and sometimes because these insiders can't really buy during the result season right so usually they do all this much before the results are out right and once the news hits the market the stock just uh, jumps uh, 15 20 25% and usually the day of the results or the good news i book out or the next day once i see the bearish candle on the daily chart right right so i take one question from zero fly helicam so he want to know i wanted to know how the input cost are tracked uh, like uh, ril uh, reliance uh, purchased nepta from russia in huge quantity but he <laughs> may not know the price right so we will not know it friends like a re- common retail investor it is very difficult to know the chemical prices or any prices of these um, let's say graphite electrode prices are moving up so we won't know unless you subscribe to those few websites that are there right it is very difficult for a retail investor to know it but the big guys who are there in the market like you have res- uh, research analysts right so their job is solely to do that so once they do their research and then once they start buying then you'll see a volume shocker right that is when you would know that okay someone is interested in this stock let me try and figure out what is happening if you want to really invest or else like i told you just make use of the once you see a volume shocker you just make use of okay what is the candlestick looking like if the candlestick is bullish on the weekly time frame you'll just go out there and buy it and keep the swing low that is the recent swing low as a stop loss friends or let's say maximum 7% would be your stop loss that you would uh, take and uh, i mean keep and take that position so sandeep uh, even we were discussing same with shashank and amia yesterday so we all mm-hmm. have different kinds to uh, uh, trading or maybe swing trading then definitely emotions mm-hmm. and your behavior plays a very vital role so like re-entering the same strong say if right. you have some uh, identified a uh, good uh, mm-hmm. trade and you entered and your stop loss got hit you cut the mm-hmm. you cut it right at again you feel like the same same security right. is uh, uh, i mean uh, ready for next move so you re-enter or uh, how you go about it yeah so if it is just a trade right uh, prince i would not really uh, mix fundamentals with it that is the i will never mix uh, stories with that right if it is purely let's say a medium term thing like if you look at something like deepak fertilizers it actually even broke the 30 wma once and kind of went down around that 350 or 330 odd mark and then from there it directly went to 700 right so if i am playing if i know something is going to do well in the next one year and i know the markets are going to be in a bull run because of the interest rates being at the same level and the liquidity is also good i would not cut those positions right if it is strictly a trade prince i would just exit that and let that stock again come in my radar and i would trade it right no sto- attaching stories with those particular stocks or those companies if it is purely on uh, let's say medium term thing i usually uh, take those positions without a stop loss which might be a little difficult for uh, people to take because unless you do that analysis right you you won't have that uh, uh, thing to hold on to something if it is down by 10 15 20% right so i i make sure like i have two different portfolios uh, prince one is purely for trading wherein i make sure every trade is taken with a stop loss and one is purely investing wherein you usually buy the stage two kind of stocks and try to push the i mean uh, play the whole wave until you see distribution finally happening that is the stock moving sideways for a few months and then breaking the 30 wma line fair enough fair enough so sandeep uh, when it comes to diversification or maybe concentrated mm-hmm. portfolio how how you manage about the risk thing and how many stocks you keep at one point in time 
so uh, for uh, investment purpose like usually it is 50 50 prints unless uh, i see that okay uh, i can't really handle these emotions and the volatility is high i might do a 70 30 that is 70 investing and 30 trading but usually it is 50 50 right if i am not finding anything in uh, investment i will not shift the capital to trading and then try to take more trades right and uh, what i do is generally 10 to 15 stocks is the max during investing or even trading prints right so let's say there are 15 stocks so it is something like you uh, pu- you are putting 7% in a stock right for every trade many people why they go wrong or let's say uh, they believe in stories first thing and the second thing is for one trade they put 50% capital allocation and the other trade they put something like 5% and the 50% wala goes down let's say 20% and your even if your 5% wala stock goes up 50% you would still end up making loss right so that is why uh, choose a method and have equal allocations for all your trades right in in such a scenario if something goes up 50% right and uh, if five fail and you have a 10% stop loss usually it should be 7% even if you have let's say 10% stop loss so for every one winner you can, you you'll still be in, uh, break breaking even if five are hitting your stop loss right so equal allocation 10 stocks in case if you are not uh, finding so many opportunities but in case if you are finding a lot of opportunities i would say 15 but going beyond that let's say many people play 30 50 stocks so that would only increase your uh, screen time like you have to go through all those charts and all of that which might be difficult for a uh, in retail investor who is also working right so high conviction stocks 10 or 15 maximum uh, right so shri ram uh, you can unmute and ask your question you have been waiting since long yeah go ahead hi thank you prince uh, sir my question to sandeep ji is uh, sir uh, you talked about this uh, volumes in sector wise is there any uh-huh. particular uh, in screener which you employ for this uh, sector wise volume growth or you go individually so i go usually sir what i have done is uh, based on the, which sector the stock belongs to right i have made a uh, thing uh, like okay these all stocks are in this particular se- se- sector right and if those uh, stocks are having uh, a volume surge right you would come to know okay there is something going on in that particular sector You so just stock any, any sir yeah. indicator like uh, like a 52 week high or something like that or some so 52 week high uh, that would only work if the stock is near the 52 week high sir what i have done is uh, looking at okay what is the average of this particular stock like what is the volume for the last let's say 100 odd days all 50 odd days you i have made uh, this thing like okay this stock usually has so and so volumes right so whenever it kind of crosses that you would know that okay there is a volume jump in that particular stock or some of them have created it on i think charting also wherein you can see okay which are the stocks that are having a surge in volume right so based on that what you can do is take the list of all those stocks and try to know okay how many stocks of which sector are making it to the list okay 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 thank you thank you sandeep ji yeah. thank you so sandeep uh... share some view on the moving moving averages and like what's your buying point do you follow any specific moving average or how you go about it and even there is question from arun on this what's buying point of uh, investors based on the average uh, uh, prince so usually moving averages uh, is not a main trigger for me to buy something unless the stock is uh, crossing the 30 wma that is 150 dma so the only after reading this uh, book by stan winstein which was i think some 4 5 or 6 months ago i started using that prince earlier it was the 50 and 200 dma for the golden cross and the death cross so even that works really well but after reading this uh, stage wise analysis i have been using the 30 wma and that uh, is kind of giving me a very good signal so usually what happens once the stock retests the line right there if you start seeing a reversal candle prints 
okay then it is an indication that okay now it is time you can even average them up right because the 30 wma line would be continuously moving up correct so whenever the stock retraces and touches that line and gives you a reversal candle it was continuously falling and then gives you a reversal candle you would know that okay now it is time that the price is telling us that the bulls are finally starting to push the stock up maybe it is taking support at the uh, 30 wma or 150 dma and the big guys are again buying it and pushing the stock up so that is one uh, indicator that i have uh, started using recently that is the 150 daily moving average or the 30 wma mo- both of them would be almost similar they might be a 1 2 or a few rupees kind of a difference because in 30 weeks if there are holidays it is not going to consider uh, those but whereas if you take 150 uh, days so it is going only going to take the trading days right so it might be a little more than 30 weeks also sometimes all right so so sandeep any and interesting sectors or maybe sub sectors which you uh, think uh, can do well in coming days and and obviously we we are not here for any mm-hmm. stock specific talks but again any right. good setup which yeah. which is good for study purpose you can share yeah sure yeah so the uh, pharmaceutical sector prince especially the epi makers right so i i don't know whether you have covered this with other speakers but uh, i'll just share my point of view so what is happening is the whole api manufacturing uh, b- business worldwide is around 250 billion dollar something right and uh, india makes hardly 30 billion of out of that china makes 200 billion and i think italy makes uh, something like 10 10 billion dollars right so this is something this is a little complex right apis is not something like where bangladesh or vietnam can tomorrow say okay we have cheap labor and we can start doing it right it does not work that way so india lost its textile business to vietnam bangladesh because of cheap labor but in case of apis you can't really have that because it is a very uh, complex thing that they make and you need to have us fda approvals and all of that right what is happening is slowly these people are moving away from china especially the european guys and even the us ones right most of these guys want to make india their second partner because of which if you go through a lot of these api makers and also the proxy plays so when i say proxy plays so all these uh, mines right uh that is uh two three are there so the solvent that they make goes into making of api right so all such proxy plays the that is the chemicals uh, guys who are directly supplying it to the api manufacturers all of them should benefit and the projection is that in the next three or maximum worst case scenario four years the whole sector from 30 billion is going to become 60 billion so if let's say that is the thing then even something like a large cap like a dvs or even others right they can continue to grow at a rapid pace because the whole sector itself is going to double right and if you are have that uh, uh, ability to spot very uh, fundamentally good small cap or a micro cap stock then definitely if the industry itself is doubling these stocks can even go up 3 4 5 or even 10x also so basically what i look for uh, in, in these companies is the capex that they are doing uh, prince right because many great companies if they are not doing capex then you are not going to see any uh, the earnings growth neither the sales growth right so capex is very important for me and along with that uh, the roc uh, prints so if the company has hardly 5% roc it does not make sense right you kind of uh, spend 100 rupees and make 5 rupees in return but whereas you see another company making 25% roc that is you put in 100 rupees in the company 25% uh, the, or 25 rupees it is going to throw back at you so basically you look for high roc companies which are doing capex as well and along with that if the company is having very good operating profit margin right operating profit margin kind of tells you about the mode of the company as well 
if the operating profit margin is let's say north of 20 percent you would know that okay this company does not have so many competitors maybe or it has some kind of a moat which is helping it have margins about 20 percent because let's say if we as a businessman talk and if someone else has opened a store and he's making 25 percent on whatever he's selling then you would be uh interested in opening that same uh, kind of a business right if there are no much permissions required you would just open it beside him and you would also start making maybe the profits are going to go down to 20 percent but still 20 percent is very good looking at that the third guy would also jump in so usually in sectors where you see very strong uh, competition the operating profit margins are horrible right and the net uh, profits that they make after all the interest costs and even the tax depreciation it would be hardly anything right so these are the main three uh, things that i look for and i'm pretty bullish on the api sector uh, prints and then the chemical names right because along with the apis even the chemical ones are going to benefit immensely and also the it sector Right. Many people are not really, they feel that the most of the IT run is over and all of that. I think yesterday Shashank uh, touched upon that. Uh, but this is something that is uh, going to grow uh, in the coming, let's say, five or 10 years because of digitalization and all the Fortune 500 companies. They now know that, okay, it is high time they also uh, digitalize and uh, get into this one. Right. So, because of which the IT sector should continue to grow. Uh, irrespective of whether there is a slowdown. I think most of the slowdown is already priced in maybe one shocker we might have, wherein it just drops by 10-15%, and then from there the new IT bull run should start. Great. We also have uh, Shubham with us. So Shubham, uh, Shashank, uh, any, any question or any inputs over what we were discussing with Sandeep? संदीप जी को तो मैं काफी दिनों से फॉलो कर रहा हूँ मेरे ख्याल से दिनों के साल हो गए होंगे एक डेढ़ साल से ऊपर हो गए वेरी गुड वर्क इन एक्यूबलेशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ट्रैकिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन मनी एंड डूंगेटेड ऑन ऑल दिस टॉपिक इन वेरी डिटेल मैनर आई थिंक स्पेस तो आठ बजे चालू हुआ था मैं लेट ज्वाइन किया तो एक घंटा हो गया या शुभम काफी डिटेल में डिस्कशन हो गया होगा तो ऐड करने के लिए तो कुछ है नहीं ऐसा कुछ Uh, okay, okay, Shubham. Like we, when we keep continuing in between, if you have any pointers or maybe any question to Sandeep, we can. Ah, uh, sure, 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 sure. So, Sachank, you had something. You, you, you were to ask something to Sandeep, yeah. I think it was not a question. I mean, it was generally, you know, a comment specifically on the, you know, when you when you look at the API data. and uh, mm-hmm. specifically the you know the the apis and the chemicals and all so do do you see any mm-hmm. specific areas where uh, you know uh, these could benefit and, and especially you know talking on in terms of pharma because you know mm-hmm. uh, in pharma sector there are certain uh, companies in the generic side which are right. uh, catering to the us they mm-hmm. are like you know having a little bit of uh, uh, you know fa- facing challenging times to, on their business right goal. right yeah so so i'm i'm like i can share my view my view is that like you know in pharma they would be you know very selectively things Correct. might might move so do you do True. you also see this thing in your analysis yes yes sir basically what i'm seeing is not every stock that is like you said the generic ones let's say there is an abort right so that might continue to grow at the same pace although the api industry is doubling it might not really affect that particular stock right but in in api itself what i'm doing is trying to figure out okay which are the big api players right and are they doing pretty good capex as well 
So if they're going to do CAPEX, naturally their top line is going to grow, their bottom line is going to grow. And along with that, if they are having good ROCs, then naturally those uh, uh, API companies should do well. So what I've done is made a basket uh, out of that, Shashank, instead of, let's say, playing on let's the bigger ones, right? What I've done is a few large ones, a few mid-cap names, a few small caps, and a very few micro-cap names also I have uh, taken position in to play the next two, three years until the whole sector itself doubles, right? So in, in that scenario, and same uh, allocation would be also uh, for the larger players, a little heavy allocation. And then as you go down for the micro caps, you don't want to really risk a lot, right? So that is how I'm in the whole API. Only the API, uh, Shashank. I'm not looking at companies who are into, let's say, uh, formulations or they are making tablets or generics and selling it. Not that. Only the Only API that. ones. Okay. So just a quick question here, since like you know, I mean, this accumulation is going on, so we do not mm -hmm. know when they would be done with their accumulation. So how do you how do you how do you allocate your capital in this case? Because you know, I mean, do you wait for a long time right. or do you how do you do that? So once I see that pretty, uh, the sector, to be honest, uh, it, it's it's been months now that there has been pretty decent accumulation in, in those ones, right? Most of these uh, uh, pharma names. So what I've done is, of the first trans I have already uh, bought it. Let's say if it gives me a dip, because looking at the whole uh, global scenario also, Shashank, sometimes I, it is based on the experience, right? Like, you know that, okay, markets are not really in a great shape and you might get a one more dip. So waiting for that dip, I have kept some more money uh, which I would uh, put it in those pharma names in case if I see a pretty decent cut. And when, when I say pretty decent cut, it might be even a 10-15%. So I'm not trading them, so I don't have a stop loss there. I'm uh, playing them more on the fundamentals. And I would um, uh, average them. To be honest, 80% of the buying is almost done there. Hardly 20% I have uh, cash in those uh, stocks to average them if they end up going lower. Right, but as per the recent report in November, the prices or most of the pharma companies did exceptionally well, is what I read recently. I'm not sure, I don't remember correctly, but uh, that is what I read. And also, with the whole COVID thing that is happening in China and even other countries, I, I feel these, especially the APIs, because uh, since China sells uh, almost 70% of the world's API, so if uh, those that country is struggling naturally most of the businesses will come to india like how how it happened during the whole covid uh, previous waves right right no i think uh, i agree with you here because uh, i think the volume expansion has already started like you know with the right. like most of these companies they have but it's just the question when the margins come in so i think the, the real trigger would yeah. be like so, you know that so what happened was with the war that happened Shashang, most of these chemical yeah. prices they shot up like crazy and because of that many people thought that okay uh, the game is over for pharma because the margins have dropped and all of that but slowly i think uh, most of the uh, management commentary that i'm hearing from q3 uh, they should be able to clear out all those uh, uh, I mean, the input cost, which they bought during the war time, right? So from Q4, you should start uh, seeing very good uh, results or even from Q3 also, uh, many of them should start giving you very good uh, operating profit margins and all of that. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And to yeah. the attendees, uh, you must be enjoying this great session. You can reciprocate by giving a follow to the guests. And if you're liking our work, you can also follow me so that more listeners and more quality content can reach more people. So, so uh, Sandeep, uh, there could be occasions when the smart money, uh, the types of smart money you discussed, the one which is invested for a shorter period and longer period, right? There could be occasions right. like in some some script, uh, both uh, may enter at uh, any point in time. So, Correct. is there any segregation which can be made or uh, how, how we so, can read these on tra uh, chart transactions? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, usually what I'm seeing is, if it is a short-term kind of a guy, right? Usually the stock goes up and it comes back at the same level. Right. In case if the stock starts making a higher high, like what Sashank was talking about, right? The Dow theory. 
so if it starts making a higher high prince you would also come to know okay maybe uh, there was a short term guy as well as well as a medium to long term guy right so there is one question from uh, uh, what's name Na- naimuddin so he's asking uh, <laughs> does valuation play any role uh, in uh, buying the i mean security on the basis of chart movements or uh, so basically he, okay. he he wanted to ask uh, do you see uh, the valuation so valuation a... yeah so i do prints so what happens is let's say there is a Uh, 10 pe stock like uh, you had M- madras fertilizer recently right which made a kind of a 52 week high because the pe was kind of 6 or something it went up 80% or close to that right it just went up like crazy let's say if a stock trading at 50 pe makes a high kind of moves above that line right no resistance line but it is already at 50 pe so maximum it can go to 60 p right you can't expect the stock to go to 100 p so valuation is also something that i look out for if it is lower the value the chances are the run might be a much better one like you can even expect a 20 30 40% percent kind of a move in that particular stock right so sleep coming to sectors like uh, do you see more rally to come in defense sector or uh, how you see is it as a i mean short time play or it will be a structural play for uh, say next 5 10 years how how you read this, this uh, sector and maybe how the the scan screener or maybe the scanner you read is it on your radar to 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 be honest uh, i'm not really following the defense sector but whatever i've read from it prince the sector as a whole should do very well but the thing is most of them are already pretty expensive at the moment right because there are very few players and all of that what has happened is and most of them are small cap companies people are already giving them 50 60 40 kind of a p so when you so on this valuation if there is time i want to discuss a little on how exactly multi baggers are made or let's say how you make the best out of your investments uh, is that yeah, please fine go ahead. okay so usually what happens prince is many people in the market they just concentrate on the earnings expansion right they say that in the next two years or let's say next 3 years the uh, earnings of this particular company is going to double that is why the stock price should also double correct so let's say it is already a 100 pe stock so a 100 pe stock uh, is having 100 rupees eps so 100 into 100 the stock price at that particular point would be 1000 rupees right so not not 1000 10000 right 100 into 100 right what would happen let's say the earnings actually double but then we go into a bear market in bear market what happens the pe's they get crunched right let's say the stock from 100 pe now investors are only give, uh, willing to give it 50 pe so although the earnings have doubled the stock price is at the same level because the pe's have gone down so how does a retail investor really benefit from it so whenever you get a great company and it is also undervalued prints there is high chance you make multi bagger returns let's say the stock is currently having earnings of 100 it is only trading at a pe of 10 so the stock price is 100 into 10 that is 1000 rupees right if along with eps growth let is earnings going to 200 plus the pe from 10 now a lot of uh, these big guys are interested so when are these big guys really going to be interested in the stock is they know that it is a fundamentally strong strong company plus they are doing a lot of capex and all of that what is going to happen they are going to start taking position once they start taking position usually the pe gets re-rated so if you look at alkala mines alkala mines used to trade at 20 15 20 pe right and in the last uh, one two years it has become a eight bagger why a eight bagger earnings have gone up only 2x but the stock has become a eight bagger like at the top at the peak it was an eight bagger so how did it become an eight bagger when the earnings went up only 2x what happened was the pe is from a level of 15 went up to 60 right 
So earnings grow 2x, P re-rating 4x, 4 into 2, you get an 8 bagger. So that is why what I my style of investing is looking at growth companies which are trading at a decent valuation. Right? If you buy something at 50 P, you can't expect a P re-rating happening even from 50 levels. Right? So have that also plus great quality company, you end up making multi-baggers. No one talks about this P re-rating in multi-baggers. They just talk about earnings explosion, right? So this is a very I mean a main thing that happens in all the multi-baggers that I've seen. Uh, Sand Sandeep, right, just right. one question I have here. Uh, yeah. See, there are two ways to play the market. One is through the sector, when the you know sector turnaround takes place. In that mm -hmm. case, of course, you know you make a lot of money when the you know PE re rates and the earnings come. That is the you know the actual com like real deadly combination. But tell me yeah. one thing: How do you apply this accumulation distribution thing? on structurally mm -hmm. moving, you know, structurally, you know, uh, stocks that are in high trend. Like, for example, you know, uh, like a continuous stage two, you can say. Okay. So, so, so in that, yeah. what I, yeah. So in that, what I do, uh, Sashank, is during that consolidation phase, right, every stock is going to have a reaccumulation phase, wherein, let's say it moves up 30% from there, it kind of cools off 10%, moves sideways, and then breaks breaks out again, Sashank, right? So what I do is, in that consolidation phase, I don't really play it, wait for it to break out again. Right. And then once it breaks out out of that previous high, right, you can average it higher. Right. As long as the stock is the 30 WMA mm -hmm. and it has gone up, let's say, 30 uh, percent and only come back 10 percent or let's say 15 percent because you have bought it at the bottom. Right. You are already sitting on 30 percent gains. So you can have a stop loss at the price you bought it. So you won't be in loss, correct? So let it uh, retrace a little, make a new kind of a base, and again, let it uh, go higher from that level. So if, if you want to average it up, so the best place would be uh, the same level which it made previously, and now it is taking out that level and moving higher. That would be the best point to average it. And once you average it, you can again move your this thing to a higher uh i mean the recent swing low that right. is the 15 percent uh, retracement that it made right, right. so, so to do you, do that you level use, you can do you, do you use weekly mm -hmm. weekly charts in that case or, or yes or, weekly. or daily because weekly since... charts sir, because daily sometimes has a lot of noise in that right so uh, because these stage two moves right they are not for 10 20 percent usually uh if it is at the start of the bull run Right, like I said, uh, looking at the interest rates, you would be able to figure out where in what market we are, correct? So, looking at that plus the stage uh, two analysis, you would know that okay, this might run 100 percent, 200, sometimes even uh, a 10x like uh, Tata LXZ, right? So, uh, in such cases, what you'll do is making use of weekly charts, just keep uh, buying them as they uh, go past their previous highs, which were made on the weekly charts. And then trail, keep trailing your stop loss. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, Shashank. So there is one question on. Uh, it is from Harish Kaushik. He is asking, uh, "What's your view on China-dependent APIs and ge generic pharma?" So generic pharma might, I mean, do well as of now because of those lockdowns. But API is more of a structural theme as of now which is going to double in the next three, four years. And I think there one can, if you, you can understand which one is making APIs and which one is really doing CAPEX and all of that, uh, you should be able to make decent gains in all the API manufacturers. Generic, right. I, I'm not really a fan of as of now. Fair enough. And uh, Harish, uh, you must have, uh, I mean, there is a mega space which happened on uh, the healthcare space in which even s every nuances was covered in detail so you can check that at over my handle or maybe youtube channel so sandeep uh, so uh, how how we can identify fake breakouts or breakdowns so as to place ourselves better yeah so usually if a fake breakouts uh, we'll talk about first and come to uh, breakdowns 
so breakouts what happens uh, for instance if on the same breakout day if the stock is ending lower than the breakout level right that is a big no for me so i don't mind buying it a little expensive but i'll make sure it is closing above the breakout level many people are in that uh, uh, this thing fomo that okay now it is in breakout i have to buy it now right i would either wait for the retest or on that particular day let's say from the breakout level it has closed 2% higher so if i buy it i am going to buy it there and the stock should not close below the breakout level that is a big no for me prince if a stock on a daily chart uh, closes below the breakout level right then it was a false uh, breakout which these guys uh, made just to trap uh, the retail because nowadays you have a lot of people just trading breakouts right so because of which uh, all those guys would be sucked into that trade and they these guys would move out that is whoever it is big guys or operators or whoever it is they would just dump it to them and move out of that stock right. and coming to breakdown prints what happens is let's say the stock was just moving sideways and we are seeing good good volumes right there was no real rally in that stock and all of a sudden the stock goes down so in such a scenario you can continue to hold it right or else exit it and then again re enter once that level is kind of i mean it, uh, there has to be some level right which is it is going to break and go down so if it is again coming above that level keep your buy price or a gtt trade at the same level okay if this is going to breach this then i am definitely going to buy it uh, so you won't be really making a loss hardly a very few even not even 1% right prince let's say your uh, breakdown level or, or that level is 100 right and it just breaks that so you end up uh, selling it at let's say 99 and you put a gtt trade at 100 so the next time it comes back to 100 maybe you you don't make that 1% kind of a thing but the move that it will give you probably let's say 10% 15% like i told you once these big guys buy something it is usually for more than 10% gains so it would cover uh, that loss that 1% loss so sandeep is there any max or minimum stop loss or uh, the 7% which you talked about previously is the one you follow and how you trail it exactly so okay so 7% is the max but let's say prince there is a swing low which is even closer to that right so whichever is the minimum i am going to take that prince let's say the stock uh retraced after going up 30% it retraced 10% and it made a swing low there and it starts moving up from there so that will become my uh, stop loss so whichever is nearer 7% or the recent swing low or there is a, a horizontal line support so i am not really a believer of these uh, diagonal lines especially in a sideways to a bear market but horizontal line support on a weekly chart definitely anyone which is closest right that would become my stop loss right sandeep so sandeep uh, explaining so the, the trailing the stop loss i was just explaining it to shashank like as as long as the stock is making a new high right i would just keep trailing my stop loss to the recent swing low right right on a week correct so so sandeep any chart patterns particularly you uh, follow or uh, i mean gangho about or it's like uh, nothing in specific they so the happen. cup and handle the cup and handle is one which i'm extremely bullish on prince right because i have seen the this particular pattern kind of give you even 100% the kind of returns if there is a decent fundamental story also along with that particular uh, th- pattern right if the let's say the company is doing capex and that chart pattern that is the cup and handle has taken let's say a year or year and a half so in that year or year and a half the company would have done capex the capex would also have come online so now the price has come back to the same level and after that handle is done usually what i have seen is 100% kind of return in such stocks right like you can apply it on deepak fertilizers also around 
i think 180 bucks plus and the next uh, pattern was made around 500 so the stock touched 1000 also okay. so the cup and handle is one which i'm extremely bullish on other patterns i don't really follow prince so sandeep if i were to ask like what's the science behind these uh, i mean uh, the chart patterns like uh, or is it like some formation comes then people enter is it that way or uh, how exactly it is to, to be honest i think it has become more like a like everyone follows that right so uh, you see a lot of buyers buying that and pushing that but in cup and handle uh, or let's say uh, 52 week high is also one thing that i believe a lot in and the cup and handle because basically what is happening is uh, in other p patterns, I'm not sure. You might have something on your uh, left-hand side that is uh, buyers who are stuck at a higher price. They might want to come in and sell. In a 52-week high, why those stocks usually outperform is everyone at that point is making money, right? So let's say a stock has touched its all-time high in its uh, uh, history has touched 100 rupees so on that particular day everyone who has ever bought that stock is in profit now tell me if any retail is in profit how many of you would want to just book it because you are in profit very few right usually the mentality is we you try to sell something once it starts to come down not when it's, it's going up so if everyone is happy holding it and the stock has taken out the 52 week high there is hardly any resistance there so such stocks usually end up uh, giving a lot of uh, return in a very quick succession and also in case someone does not want to find these volume shockers and all of that if you just follow the 52 week high setup looking at how many stocks from which sector are making the 52 week high thing you can try to figure out okay where exactly is the smart money moving which sector are they bullish on so, so Sandeep, uh, the cycle, the market cycles are getting shortened, right? So, when it comes Correct. to se sectoral rotation, so how mm -hmm. much time or maybe how many quarters you see there are uh, uh, rotation patterns uh, you observe? Or means how how one can identify? Is there any time limit or uh, it's all so on you... the basis of volumes only? How how you read? It? So, so usually it is based on valuation prints. Like once a sector kind of becomes. Uh, decently valued right that is when smart money what it does it it starts booking out out of that and uh, tries betting on something which is having some kind of a tailwind and it is also reasonably valued so once they start pushing it up what generally retail investors do is try to get in at the end of that run right when the stock or the uh, sector is already fairly valued from there hardly a few percentage point move would be there right after which the stock would just go sideways or if the bear market starts they would start correcting also so uh, th i have this thing like uh, if you are in the market then have three different kind of uh, stocks one is great quality stocks so in the bull run the first stocks that are going to become overvalued are the great quality one sprints then the mediocre stocks right which are having decent rocs no real capex so those kind of stocks are the second ones to run in a bull run and at the end the all the kachra stocks run to be honest wherein what people start doing is okay this stock belongs to this sector the leader is having 60p this one is having 10p so i should buy this particular stock because in the when the if the economy is doing well the results posted by the Kachara stock will also be decent. So people start thinking, ye leader jo hai, wo 60 PE pe chal hai. To ye, ye wala stock, same uh, industry. Many people do this industry PE comparison, right? They feel 60 PE and this one is at 10. It's a blind buy. Let me buy this Kachara stock at 10 PE. And even if it goes to 20 PE, I double my money. But the thing is, what does say, art aega, even because usually these run at the last uh, end of a bull run and all these people start buying the, all such kachara stocks and then the whole run will only uh, start coming to an end. So valuation, first the quality names run. Usually this is what I've seen in my uh, two years of a bull run, uh, this thing that I've seen. 
quality first, mediocre second, and the kachra last. So when you see a lot of kachra stocks actually moving up, uh, there is no fundamental story, nothing. You would know that, okay, we are coming to kind of an end of this particular bull run. So Sandeep, uh, like uh, in uh, in bull run, we know the valuations go crazy, right? So is there any right. upper cap uh, when it comes to the multiples you keep? Or is it like it is all about the setup and volumes and you, the criteria is certain? Right. So after hitting a certain point, uh, Prince, if the stock is just consolidating, like even if it is coming out with good set of results, but there is no moment in the price. Right, you would kind of figure out okay, these big guys are not interested in pushing the stock higher. Right, maybe they might be using these good results to kind of book out and come out of that stock and move it to different sector. So, when something on the good results fails to make a new high, that is when you would be really uh, cautious. Right, so there are many uh, talks about PSU banks these days. Mm-hmm. So, so what's yeah. your take? Has the so, rally uh, be? I mean, where you see we are in the rally which is going on this sector, and uh, how long it can sustain? Yeah, to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of these uh, PSU stocks, neither the PSU banks. To be honest, the NPA trouble is not really a way. If let's say we go into a uh, consolidation phase for the economy with these increase in interest rates, right? A lot of them might start posting horrible NPA figures. So once uh, uh, one bank does, all of them would start doing that and you would see a big drop in them. So many people are saying it's a turnaround and all of that. I really don't believe that as of now, right? Or maybe they might be cheap compared to a, a private bank, but Everyone knows how the working system is in these PSU banks. So not really a, a buyer in them, uh, Prince. And if someone has made profits, good for them. But I, I don't think the rally is going to last more. Or probably we might have hit the uh, peak as well. Or maybe just for the budget thing. If I don't know, maybe some uh, announcement might be coming in for those banks. One last rally might be pending, which might be sold into once the budget is done. Right, fair enough. So there are talks about uh, the infra theme and railway theme as well. So are you tracking these or uh, how how these are pending out? So railways, uh, they should uh, continue to do well. But uh, the thing is, uh, if you buy them at the start of the run, Prince, then you end up making better returns. Usually what I've seen is in the fifth year of the government, right, the budget, usually they won't be so bullish on the whole uh, CAPEX thing. Right, it is more to do with the wooing the voters and all of that. Right, something similar happened in 2018 also. So if you see uh, the infra stocks, they made a high in 2018, and since then most of them corrected in 2019, 20. Most of them actually came down quite a lot. Right. So during the fourth year, that is when they run the most. The PSU banks, the infra theme, right? Until the budget is done. And usually in the budget, there won't be much for them. And that is when these guys kind of book out. And then that is what I have seen in the previous run. Let's see how how it happens in this budget. But I'm not really, although the uh, long run, you should make decent gains. But let's say if the already the infrastructure is trading at 20p, 25p, then there is no much room for you to make money there. Right. So there is one interesting question from Arun. So he's asking, mm-hmm. say some stock is uh, one particular day has high volumes and mm-hmm. rest of the days the volume is low. So how one should read it? By uh, When we say the volumes are high, how long uh, shall we monitor that? So sometimes, like I told, it depends, right? If it is uh, a guy who is a medium-term guy, Prince, he has come in, he has bought it. He's not doing anything. The, there is no, uh, the price is neither going up, neither going down. So it might be a medium-term kind of a guy who has just come in there, right? So in, in such a scenario, if you want to invest, play it, uh, looking at the fundamentals. If you are a trader, wait for the price to go up. Even if it is one day volume, high volume, right? You need the candlestick or the technical confirmation that after that is done, the stock is trying to move up. Right, right. 
but just one day volume is usually the medium term kind of guys uh, prince fair enough fair enough so there have been questions around the metal metal sector so where uh, you see the metal sector mm-hmm. is heading and uh, how so the metal sector actually if you if i have to tell you how exactly to the play the cycle right metal cycle you look so what happens is in all the cyclicals why do they run up 5x 10x because their uh, operating profit margins they shoot up like crazy they might be making 3% profit now all of a sudden it jumps to 30% operating profit margin so your profits basically have gone up 10x so that is why your uh, stock price will also go up 5x 7x or sometimes 10x also right so once you start seeing a drop in the operating profit margin or if you're directly linking that with the commodity like steel prices are coming down so if steel prices are coming down there is no point being uh, invested in a tata steel or a uh, sale because the profits that would be posted next quarter are definitely going to be lower than the previous one right and along with that i use the stage wise analysis also prints to figure out where exactly we are right so now what is happening is they were trying to lockdown thing has happened because china is the biggest consumer of uh, all these commodities right so because of which i think it might get delayed a uh, little but by once the next bull run start we must be joining again guys there there must be some glitch on twitter's part so in the meantime uh, please uh, check out our handles and if you're liking our spaces and uh, the knowledge shared by our guest please check out their handles and minds as well and also the recorded post podcasts are placed over my youtube channel through which you can access this later yeah sorry sandeep you got dropped am i audible oh, it just got dropped so, so. Yeah. yeah continue please yeah so i kind of for- forgot what i exactly was t- so uh, yeah the metal cycle right so what i do is uh, use that along with the uh, stage wise analysis to figure out where exactly we are in the cycle and if it is below the 30 wma line you'll know that it, okay it is now in stage 4 and usually these correct quite a lot so metals if you look at them they'll ra- in every cycle they rally 100% most of the time sprints right in a year's time frame if you look till take up tata steel or any chart right so metal chart in a year's time frame they go up 100% and after that they usually retrace even uh, 50% from the top many of many times right so ba- based on the tech, you know, stage wise analysis you can actually figure out where we are and like i was telling you because of this china whole lockdown or whatever is happening there due to covid the uh, i mean the next cycle metal cycle might get delayed by a, a few months or few quarters right right so so coming to the cement sector <clears throat> so we, i mean there are talks like we go election next or maybe early uh, next to next year mm-hmm. so we have seen in the past the infra sector sector and cement sector ought to do good because uh, there are populist budget and infrastructure uh, projects being declared by the government so as to right. appease so do you see any any traction in these sectors yeah so they have been doing pretty well like if you look at m- most of the stocks in those sectors right they have done reasonably well and i think going into the budget and after the budget also there might be some euphoria around those uh, stocks prints but that usually would be short lived right as you go into the election year many people start taking out money if there is some kind of an uncertainty right so i would suggest not to buy something uh, at an expensive p so when i say expensive p it depends from sector to sector right so even a 20 p in a in the infra uh, sector might be uh, pretty expensive or let's say 30 p right maybe for other chemical stocks with some kind of a moat even uh, they trade usually around the 30 p so you would, wouldn't really call that as expensive 
right right so sandeep uh, i have been getting many requests uh, they are asking about books on accumulation and distribution and uh, also on the stage analysis so yeah. if you could name out again sure so the anna calling book uh, that uh, someone else had also mentioned right so that should give you an idea when exactly to buy and how these operators or insiders plus the media houses they play on your sentiment so that you can keep your uh, emotion under control that is the main thing while you're trading like not to uh, get in uh, something with fomo right you would feel like okay this is once in a lifetime kind of opportunity and start buying it so never do that especially if something has rallied more than 5% right i usually don't touch that stock because you never know when uh, the selling might come in so i i would uh, look for better opportunities which are just about to rally right uh, so that is one book on accumulation distribution the uh, stage wise analysis it is a book called profiting in bull and bear market by stan winstein uh, you should get the soft copy also online if you are having kindle or else you can uh, buy those books from amazon so if someone reads these two right prints i mean to be honest the stage wise itself is very good for someone who's a retail investor and does this just to beat the fds to be honest you'll beat fds handsomely if you read just that one book and apply whatever he has told you in that particular book right if the market itself is bearish sit out don't be in a hurry to come in try to trade try to invest right don't go against the market let the bear market end let, let it be 6 months 1 year because the uh, the worse the bear market is the better the opportunity would be in the next bull market right as the pe's compress the it would be more of a spring reaction wherein from a 10 pe it can even go to 30 40 50 pe right so just stay out again come in once the uh, th- things start looking better right so sandeep how good we are on time i can extend till 10 if you have time or it's up to you totally sandeep uh, you there yeah prince so i ordered this and yeah yeah so so what i was saying was uh, it's already a an hour and a half so maybe we can have one more q and a session after a few weeks in case uh, people really want to ask questions and all right maybe combine that, it with that, few that, other hosts or uh, speakers uh, and maybe we can have a sure, session surely surely i can do that so yes. so i do uh, have one or two last questions sure, so Prince. we take that and after that we wrap up for today sure. so supply exhaustion right mm-hmm. and like fro- float cornering mm-hmm. so would like to know more about these topics uh, as we discussed previously yeah so usually the uh, price action tells you that uh, prince right so after pretty decent volumes right if the stock starts in moving up right that is an indication that okay let now the most of the float has been cornered and the stock even on okay volume starts moving up right sometimes it happens like you have pretty decent volume nothing happened and then on low volumes the just the stock starts moving up so that is an indication that okay the most of the big buying has already happened and now the stock is just moving up on even small volumes right so that is how the supply exhaustion or the float cornering usually happens like whenever you see a stock moving up without re- any volumes also that is after uh, huge volumes right Th- that is an indication that no one is really trying to sell it right even on very little volume buying or little demand the stock is just making i mean higher uh, highs right sandeep yeah. so so sandeep this will be purely your discretion any good setups you want to discuss or obviously with a proper disclaimer and disclosure or we can also skip that because there are yeah. various requests which are stock specific we, which we are not taking but again if you have something in mind and wanted to share uh, it's purely up to you so as of now nothing because the, the chart pattern right uh, most of them had a very bad uh, chart pattern because the last week scandal most of them was a big red bar right so 
that is why uh, as of now i am still skeptical because today's uh, data prints is not really that great right maybe this uh, rally might get sold into as well so uh, as of now wouldn't want to really uh, talk about the next trades because things aren't looking that great but uh, like we discussed the api the it stocks the chemical names people can make use of the stage 2 uh, thing and start investing in them for the next bull run great great so sandeep uh, before we close your view on uh, the broader market for next one year how you see things panning out on the basis of technicals so based on what the all the parameters that i use right on the especially the interest rates and all of that prince i feel the next 6 months might be a little i mean no one really knows what is happening right it is too volatile because of the whole covid situation that is still playing out in china if interest rates start to drop that is when usually you go into the stage 1 or uh, the accumulation phase and from there the next bull market should start so interest rates are actually uh, a negative for the stock market as of now because they have gone up too much so once you start that cooling off right or it starts reversing that is when i feel the next uh, bull run should really start and that might, would again go for let's say 2 3 years and people should make very good money in that period so this next 6 months we don't know whether we would crack a lot uh, i don't feel we would crack a lot unless interest rates go to let's say 6 currently they are 6.25 if it goes to 6.75 or even 7 then it would be very difficult for the small and mid caps to hold the current level sprints they might crack even 10 20% right i mean i'm talking about the broader market not uh, a particular sector great great sandeep and uh, guys uh, i think uh, you enjoyed a thoroughly insightful session and you should recipro- reciprocate by following our guest for today and sandeep also before we close uh, like uh, you teach people right? right so so some some think if somebody wants to get in touch with you or what all is covered so would love to know from you sure uh, so basically uh, the first thing i talk about is the accumulation distribution part like teach people how to uh, look at the charts and make your their own decisions not really rely on someone else looking at the data and when to enter when to exit so that is one thing i cover and also the market cycles how exactly the market cycles work prince like why does the stock market rally why does it start coming down so market cycles is something then uh, fundamentals also i cover like how you can really spot these great quality companies which are still at a decent valuation wherein you you can finally end up having a multi bagger in your uh, kitty and the third uh, and the last thing is cyclicals many people don't know they use the same uh, formulas to buy a investment they use the same thing to buy a cyclical stock because cyclicals they go up like crazy they fall like crazy you can't really have a cyclical stock as investment but many people e- even on twitter they kind of preach that hold tata steel for 10 years and all of that that doesn't really work because if something is going to come down by te- 50% it is better that you exit at the top and again re enter it right so these are the m- major four things that are covered and also i would uh, be teaching them how to actually uh, take the data and do it on their own as well and also the screeners that i use for fundamental investments and and one small input before we close so any so for data gathering or maybe for screeners do you use any paid apps or it's like uh, all free tools are at our uh, disposal for uh, getting your work done. so uh, uh, all are free actually prints right so the data i get it from nsc the screener is also a free thing which i use for fundamental analysis so no paid apps or to be honest i i don't even have a trading view uh, paid thing right so hardly i told you right three indicators for me one is uh, the uh, moving averages right the second one is rsi so and that's it so sometimes i don't even use three right i have seen people use eight 10 indicators 
to be honest it only confuses uh, people one is so the data which tells you whether the big guys are buying or selling second is the candlestick which tells you whether the price is going up or going down third is the momentum is the momentum bullish or is the momentum bearish right now right if these three things are covered i think you are good to go you can trade in any kind of market great great and sandeep but trust me it was one of the best session we had yeah. and it was really insightful i myself learned a lot and i think our attendees must have got uh, so much today and yeah. they can also uh, tell us about the feedback of the session or maybe from the host and anything more they want the guest to cover in uh, upcoming sessions maybe in the early next year sure. so any any closing remark uh, sandeep uh, before uh, we close and if you want to say anything about my work also so please yeah feel so free. it's a great thing you are doing prince and uh, i'm sure uh, people would want to subscribe to your youtube thing also and uh, listen to other people's uh, uh, trading methods and all of that and it is not like uh, one particular trading method will suit everyone right it, uh, depending on the temperament so uh, go through different uh, trading methods and whichever suits you that is what one a retail investor should pick up so you're doing a great job prince by covering different people different methods and all of that and definitely that should help uh, retail investors also and also enjoyed uh taking the questions uh, talking about my experience so far it was indeed a great time for me as well prince great great thank you for your words sandeep yeah. and trust me like uh, our spaces can go for 4 uh, 5 hours also but again in the want of time and uh, yeah. as you promised we we meet again uh, sure. so that uh, we can have a, basically more of q and a session from the attendees because they must be having so many questions and uh, as far as technicals are concerned things change so fast so that true maybe in next one month we have different view sure. so with this uh, i take your leave guys and yeah. please Please, please reciprocate in the form of following that gives us the motivation that we are spending our time and more people connect we get to know more learned people and we bring uh, them to our forum so as to create an ecosystem of learning mm -hmm. so thank you sandeep yeah. and best wishes for your teaching part and yeah. you are doing a great tremendous job and i i have been following you since long and uh, trust me you 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 made me develop uh, interest for technicals again yeah. thank you thank you prince thank you everyone for joining and listening thank you uh, and guys uh, like i'll be uploading uh, this session over youtube channel and will be tagging sandeep and sharing over my handle so anyone who face any difficulty they can dm me or reach me out uh, i'll share the link thank you good night thank you good night everyone